What's good, Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji with episode three of the Raiders Pod. Today, I want to talk about a lot of different news that has hit the last couple of days. Training camp has started, and John Gruden and Mike Mayock gave their first press conference today. So, I want to talk about all of those things some of the notes that i've taken from some of the things that these two guys said as well as ab showing up in a hot air balloon i mean what a cool way to show up uh, to training camp i think that's uh, definitely unique right people show up in these uh, these luxury cars uh, jalen ramsey showed up in the back of a uh, of the of the security uh that the money whatever it is i don't know what it's called but the truck that transports money from bank to bank that was pretty cool too and and tony brown shows up in a hot air balloon i think that was by far the best thing i've seen so far this off season but getting right into it uh, th there's been some injury updates everybody knows about the keith smith injury which i said is a pretty big blow others might not agree with that i still think it's a pretty big blow uh, primarily because we don't use a fullback that often but when we do it's primarily to a run block or pass block um, and we need someone that's good at it i know keith smith was pretty good i know some people didn't like him because he had that uh, one drop pass week two uh, but mike mayock gave an update on his left knee so he did have successful surgery um, there's no time frame that mike mayock put to his injury uh, but one of the interesting interesting things that mayock did say is uh, he made it explicitly clear that it's not near a season ending injury which to me was kind of weird because the initial reports were uh, Keith Smith's going to be out for about two, two to week, two to four weeks. Um, but why would he mention it's nowhere near season ending if it's you know if it's like three weeks? Like that's not even that far away, um, you know. Uh, so he didn't put a timetable on it. I just kind of found that one interesting. Another one I found interesting that I actually didn't know about was Denzel Good, who before the Raiders brought in Jonathan Cooper was supposed to be our starting left guard for the first two weeks. Now, I had no idea he was hurt. I did not see any reports the fact that Denzel Good was hurt, but now it makes more sense as to why they brought in Jonathan Cooper. Denzel Good had lower back surgery about five weeks ago, and he's going to be out, uh, according to Mike Mayock, for the next two months, from today, at least two more months. Uh, he'll be on the PUP list, and he will not be playing. And, and that means he's going to be out at least the first, I'd say, a uh, couple of weeks of the regular season. Uh, two months away is a pretty long time. You know, we're going to start uh, the season by then. So Denzel Good's going to be out, which is very interesting because, you know, Jonathan Cooper is not really trustworthy, right? He's been hurt in the past. He could definitely get hurt again. We don't really know where he's at. Um, as far as his health now John Gruden did talk a little bit uh, ab about him um, he said he was impressed with him uh, he said he's a smart athletic guy and he made sure to mention that he's healthy he also mentioned uh, one of the reasons why him and Mayock wanted to bring him in was because Cooper played in a similar offense last year to the Raiders offense this year um, and you know he, he talked a little bit about some of the other reasons why they brought him in including the fact that they wanted a veteran next to Colton Miller uh, which could be bad news for uh, the rookie Lester Cotton right uh, Honestly, if we didn't bring in Cooper, who would be our left guard? It'd either be a Lester Cotton, um, maybe our backup center, James Debbie, or maybe like someone like Denver Kirkley and David Sharp, if they can make that transition from tackle to guard. It's a very interesting question. I had no idea Good was hurt, but uh, basically Good and, and Keith Smith are both hurt. Um, and uh, John Good and Mike Mayock were asked if everyone is here and if they expect everyone to be here. And they did confirm that people are still coming, but from their, as far as they know, not everyone should be here. And I haven't heard anything, and I don't really see any player that would hold that anyways, right? There's really no star on the Raiders that would want more money, uh, and that deserves it today, right? Um, and there's really no player that can hold the Raiders uh, to that degree that players like Ezekiel Elliott or Melvin Gordon or David Clowney can, right? Because those guys are superstars. We don't really have anyone like that 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 wants a contract right we had cleo mac last year but we don't really have anyone else uh, this year uh, moving on i want to talk about some of the other things that were mentioned uh, in this press conference that i personally found interesting uh, one of the questions john gruden was asked was uh, how he f uh, essentially felt about colton miller uh, how important is he to the offense and what have you seen and john gruden said that uh, the offensive tackle position is vital to any pro offense which obviously right that's that's pretty common um and he said that when he came to the Oakland Raiders, 
he remembered that there was no proven tackle that was in their prime on the active roster when he came here. That was prior to the draft uh, of in which we took Colton Miller. Uh, he also said Colton Miller is a guy who we think has a huge upside. He's tough. He's played through a lot of things as far as injuries. He's a sharp kid. He plays with pride. And John Gordon made the bold statement where he, he said, I'd be shocked if he isn't a strong point of the offense. We believe in a lot of him. Um, it's very interesting. You know, I said this in the past. I have a lot of faith in Colton Miller as well. I've watched his film. You know, to a certain degree, his sacks do not live up to how bad he really played. You know, if you look at his stats, you would say that, wow, he probably struggled like 95% of the season because he allowed so many sacks. But that's not the case. I would say he played much better for most of the season than he played bad. A lot of his sacks came right after he got hurt, right after he hurt his knee. He had six sacks within the next two weeks after hurting his knee. Six sacks right after he hurt his knee. Uh, and then he also had uh, a couple more uh, three sack games. I mean, most of his sacks came within four to five games, right? So I think you have to consider that when you talk about Colton Miller. Uh, very interesting that John Gruden's so high on him. Um, and, you know, again, I, I think it's interesting to talk the fact that uh, when Gruden was talking with the offense tackles and how there was no proven offense tackles on the roster, uh, he also mentioned that uh, you know, Trent Brown, of course, he's mentioned this in the past. Trent Brown was a player that they really wanted, right? They came in saying that, hey, if we can get one of the best tackles, uh, we're going to go out and get him. You know, it, it, it surprises me because when we picked up Trent Brown, I, as well as I would say everyone else was saying that Colton's going to go from left to right and Trent Brown will be the starting left. Uh, there's only one person that I know, uh, and I'll give him the credit, and that's Vic Tafer. Uh, he he was saying that Trent Brown's going to play right tackle, according to what he heard, and he was 100% correct. You know, in camp, or in, sorry, in OTAs, um, in mini camp, I noticed that Trent Brown had his right hand down opposed to his left hand. So I, I kind of started picking that up. Uh, and then I made the, the suggestion that I think he's going to be the, the right tackle and Colton Miller will be the left tackle. Because that's kind of what each player is playing. And within the next couple of days, John Gruden came out and confirmed it. That Trent Brown would be the, the right tackle and Colton Miller will stay at left tackle. Which shows a lot. You know, Donald Penn got hurt. And when Penn came back, the Raiders didn't make the, the rookie Miller move to right tackle. They made the veteran move to right tackle. They didn't when when they signed Trent Brown. They didn't make the rookie or the young, you know, first second round player move to right tackle. They made the veteran Trent Brown move to right tackle, which shows how much faith they have in Colton Miller. Uh, another thing that uh, Gruden was asked by a reporter was how he felt uh, about the younger players, and he said he was super impressed with Farrell, Crosby, and Bell. He did confirm that they'll all have different roles which is very important. His exact role, his exact words are uh, each of those players' roles are different. They are all very versatile and they can do a number of different things. That's very important to understand because uh, Cleveland Farrell, we know, is a three-down player. Run, pass, uh, third down, first down. He's going to be in the game, right? Obviously, he's a fourth overall pick. He should have to do that. Uh, but we know Arden Key is not that. And, and uh, Mike Mayock talked a little bit about that, that he felt that, Arden Key played way too much last year, and he was kind of thrown in there, and, and they essentially did not want him to play the amount of snaps he ended up playing, which was interesting that he mentioned that. Uh, but again, getting back to Gruden, he also mentioned uh, Crosby Bell uh, were also impressive, and, and you know I, I see how they will fit into different roles, right? And then he also spoke on Trayvon Mullen in that same conversation. Um, he said Trayvon Mullen has come in and proven he is competitive, and he can win a job here, which is interesting because that's a lot to already say. You know, last year uh, when when Gruden was talking about Nick Nelson, I specifically remember him talking, uh, saying that he's he's a good player, but he has to prove himself and he has to win. Right? He didn't say he's gonna come in and win a job here. Like he he didn't explicitly say that, right? Um, but he did say uh, Nick Nelson was one of the bright spots in OTAs this year. Which is interesting, right? You mentioned that today. Um, he also talked to. Uh, uh, he was also asked specifically about what he thought about the cornerbacks, um, and his first response was, "We didn't bring Mullen in for for any other reason." Um, and I feel like that essentially means that he will. You know, they weren't that high on the cornerbacks in general. Um, he also said uh, about Garen Conley. He said Conley needs to be healthy and he needs to establish himself. 
Uh, we think he has a huge amount of talent, but of course he emphasized uh, that he needs to stay healthy, which I totally agree with and I totally understand where Gruden's coming from. Conley hasn't been able to be healthy. You know, his his first year, he was out for or for most of the year. And then even training camp in his second year, he was out for parts of it. Um, you know, th those that whole thing where he was benched. Uh, I heard rumors that he wasn't benched. Instead, he was hurt and he was playing through an injury and the, uh, the coaches forced him out of the game. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. Um, and then that's when he also mentioned about uh, Worley. He wants to see if Worley can stay healthy. He said he has a lot of confidence in him. Nick Nelson was one of the bright spots in OTAs. I mentioned that. Uh, one of the things that's interesting with, with the his comment on Trayvon Mullen about, uh, he said exactly, Trayvon Mullen has come in and proven he's a competitive and win a job here, uh, which it's not a complete sentence, right? He doesn't say he can win a job here, but he did say and win a job here, which is interesting because when he was asked about Josh Jacobs, he said Jacobs won't be a feature back until he shows he deserves it because he isn't it right now, uh, which is good. I don't think any player should should be given that opportunity. They should have to prove it. But I think that's very interesting that he mentioned that when talking about Josh Jacobs, but when talking about Mullen saying that he, you know, he, and he can win a job here um, because with Jacobs, he said he has to prove it, which again, it, it's good. You know, I prefer players have to prove it, but he also went on to talk about how, you know, NFL running backs are taking huge punishments, right? He has to get hit and get back up right which is true right in nfl a linebacker hitting an nfl running back is equivalent to a car accident which is a huge impact um, and gruden saying that josh jacobs has to prove that he can take those hits so as of right now uh, doug martin's going to be the feature back for the oakland raiders now that could change honestly after preseason week one week two week three who knows right it could change as we're entering week one of the regular season We'll find out. If I had to make the prediction, I don't think Jacob starts right away. I think kind of like Alvin Kamara, he'll kind of have to earn his role. Uh, but when he does, I, I think Jacob's going to take off, and I think he'll be a great player. Uh, staying on this same conversation, uh, when Gruden was asked how he felt about his players, uh, he also talked about Vontez Burfecht. And one of the things he said was, uh, Vontez Burfecht will be the straw that stirs the drinks. He will call adjustments and be that leader for this team. And then he also mentioned Brandon Marshall can be an associate of his, which I think that belittles Brandon Marshall, but it raises Vontez Burfecht to a much higher uh, degree, right? It, it, John Gruden's essentially saying Vontez Burfecht has already been given the role that he has to come in and he's going to be making those adjustments. He's going to be making the calls, right? Saying Vontez Burfecht will be the straw that stirs the drink means he's going to be the main guy that's essentially going to be running the defense which makes sense he has his uh he's had his time with paul gunther right so it makes sense but it's it's interesting that gruden said brian marshall can be an associate of his to me you know that's not saying a lot that's kind of belittling uh brian marshall that's just my opinion but you guys can tell me something different in the comments below uh, you can follow me on Twitter, message me on Instagram, whatever it is. I'm out there on all those social networks. Uh, just find me, follow me, uh, and let me know what you guys think. How good can Vontez Perfect be with the Oakland Raiders? You know, will he be a true three-down linebacker, or will he only be a uh, run-first linebacker? Let me know in the comments below. But moving on, I just want to uh, talk a little bit more about some of the things that were said in this press conference. If you guys watch some of my videos on YouTube, uh, yes, follow me on Twitter. You will know that I'm pretty high on Jonathan Abram. I really like him. Uh, Gruden was asked what he thinks about Abram, and Gruden answered, he's very sharp. He loves football. You can't get rid of the guy. He's texting me, calling me all of the time. Gruden made a joke saying, I'm going to change room so he can't find me. I love this guy. And then uh, Mike Mayock also said that um, yesterday and the day before he was uh, Jonathan Abram was frustrated because he couldn't hit people and he also said he's a very fun guy to watch practice uh, and he's fun player and, and and you know one of the things I get from Abram is uh, he he's a motivator you know he motivates people and and one of the things that uh, I've heard uh, Jeffrey Simmons who's, who's a first round pick Montez Sweat who's also a first round pick uh, their teammates of uh, of Abram they say that, you know, he's that guy that gets everyone going. He's the guy that pumps players up. And, 
And it looks like that's what Gruden went out and got because that was the same thing said about Cleveland Farrell. You know, the other three defensive linemen that, that played with Farrell were saying that Farrell's the, the clear leader of the defense, and, and it shows. You know, you can tell that Farrell, Abram, these guys just, they, they have it, you know. And, and uh, I love Farrell. I think he's going to be a great player, but I think Abram's going to be even better. You know, I'm super high on Abram. Uh, just the way he carries himself, the way he recognizes the game, the way he practices. He has a passion for the game, and you can definitely see it um, when Gruden talks about him or when Abram, you know, he enters the room and he, and he talks. You know, I love Abram. I think he's going to be a fantastic player. I want to know what you guys think about him as well. Uh, moving on, uh, Mike Mayock was also asked how he kind of felt about uh, some of the defense linemen from last year, the young guys, uh, which was essentially Maurice Hurst. Uh, PJ Hall and Arden Key. Uh, Mayock said that uh, he he needs Maurice Hurst and PJ Hall to step it up. He said that uh, he did not see it last year, but he needs to see it this year, which is kind of shocking because to me that shows that he did not see enough from those two young rookies, uh, those young D tackles, and that's kind of shocking to me because uh, for rookies I felt like they're pretty decent players. Um, Maurice Hurst had four sacks, I think, which led the, the team. Uh, P.J. Hall was a straight stud the second half of the season. Um, he was graded as one of the highest rookie defensive linemen. I think he was the second highest graded rookie defensive lineman against the run. Um, and then he also said that, and I think I mentioned this earlier, uh, he said that Arden has gained some weight. Uh, he played more than we wanted. He's kept on more weight, which is good, of course. Uh, we hope he doesn't have to play the same number of snaps as he did last year. We are wide open for PJ and Mo making a move in camp, but they have to earn it. Kind of seems like that's what Gruden and, and, and John John Gruden and Mike Mayock are saying is uh, these guys have to earn their roles, which is good. right? Nothing should ever be given uh, to any player, no matter what, what happens. I think it's very interesting that... Um, that Mayock did say that he didn't see it last year from Hurst and Hall. Um, that you know that that should put a fire underneath those two guys. They they need to understand that there's a lot riding on them. You know Raider Nation is super high on those two players to lead our defense, especially that front right that sets the tone. Um, that's going to be interesting. So we'll kind of see how how all that pans out. Um, another thing that uh, Mike Mayock was asked was uh, how has the incognito a suspension been you know like how has it been for him and Mayock said that he expected the suspension and that they planned uh, for it he said that they knew about it and he also said from my perspective I got back several uh he said he's he went back several line coaches that uh incognito has played with and he's talked to them and and they've told uh, they've told Mayock that he's had some dark moments but he's also had a lot of great moments, uh, and he's a very respectful person. That's what Mayock said that some of uh, Richie Incognito's past offensive line coaches said about him. Um, and, and then he also made the emphasis that so far, he's been very respectful to all the players, and he's been helping the young rookies out, uh, which is great. You know, that, that's what we want. And he also mentioned, uh, he didn't say young rookies let me correct myself he said some of the younger linemen out uh, which could be rookies could be colton right him and colton will be lining up next to each other uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see how all this plays out uh, what is actually most interesting is um, if they if the raiders were planning for this suspension why is it that not until he actually got suspended do we go out and sign a guard right they've known about denzel good's injury it's not like good just got hurt a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago he's been hurt for a while he had he's had surgery five weeks ago so five weeks ago if you knew that he was having surgery and he's going to be out for you know over three months right five months ago or five weeks ago it was over three months if you knew who was going to be out for such a long time and you only had a rookie backup left guard lester cotton senior um of course you know you have the backup center who could play guard if that was all you had and you're saying you had planned for it, but you didn't sign Jonathan Cooper until after Incognito was actually suspended. Were you were you guys really, did you guys really plan for it? I don't know. I feel like he might have just said that just to say it. I don't think they planned for uh, Rich Incognito being suspended. That's just my uh, personal opinion on, on that based off the way he answered it and kind of what he said. Now, of course... You know, Gruden and Mayock don't have to share everything with us. And I don't think they do, honestly. Uh, I'm sure Gruden and Mayock have 
inside sources within the league that tells them, hey, you know, there's a chance he'll be suspended for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And that's kind of what happened with Martavius Bryant last year. Remember, John Gruden went out and got him because uh, Gruden was told uh, that there will not be a suspension. And, you know, it went back and forth. A lot of things happened. He, some say he failed the drug test. Some say he didn't. Uh, you know, and then eventually, you know, the outcome was what it was, right? We wasted the third round pick. That's what it comes down to. Uh, sw- switching courses here. One more thing I want to talk about, which I kind of found interesting. Um, because there's, there's, like, there's two different beliefs among if hard knocks is a... Um, if it's a distraction or if it's not a distraction, you know, I've heard players like uh, um, Shannon Sharp, right? I think he was on the first ever hard knocks talk about it. Uh, I've heard like some of these other analysts like Chris Carter and some of these other ex NFL players talk about hard knocks and kind of the impacts that it has had. Um, A lot of these guys, and I guess these things are, are part of the media now, so they're no longer in the actual locker rooms. And truthfully, they're never really coaches or GMs, which I guess those people would have a whole different perspective than an actual player, right? Uh, so these ex-players who are now TV media analysts say say that hard knocks was not a distraction, and it's not a distraction um, because a lot of it's like you know you tell a player come over here, we're gonna set this setup for you guys, and you guys are gonna do this or do that, and we're gonna record it, and then we're gonna include it. Uh, a lot of it is is it's reality TV, right? A lot of it's fake. It's set up, right? If there's something negative that happens, they're not going to air that, right? They're going to cut that out. Um, but these NFL media analysts, ex-players, all of them say it's not a distraction. But Mike Mayock uh, specifically talked about hard knocks. And Mike Mayock says um, the reason why you go away for training camp, right? Uh, the reason why the Oakland Raiders go to Napa and don't practice in, o- in Alameda, right, Oakland, uh, is, you know, Napa's uh, an hour, hour and a half away, right? It's not super far away, but it's definitely not, it's not Oakland or Alameda, right? Uh, of course, Alameda's technically not part of Oakland, but um, it is, right? You can't get to Alameda without driving through Oakland. Um, the reason why uh, Mike Mayock mentioned that they go away for training camp is because there's a lot of distractions, uh, when you're trying to get the young guys and, and trying to implement certain things and try to get that mindset going, pumping, ready to start hitting, put those pads on. And there's a lot of distractions if you stay within uh, the radius of, of where you guys essentially play your games, right? Like Oakland or Alameda. He said the reason why they go away is to get away from these distractions. Uh, but he then he then he mentioned that hard knocks is a, dra- is a distraction. And he mentioned that he did not want it here. And that essentially it was handed to them by the NFL, which kind of sucks if you really think about it, right? Mike Mayock says that they did not want hard knocks. And I guess that's what the general con- concept conception is from the coaches and the GMs. But you don't want hard knocks. You don't want it to, to come in. Uh, but the NFL kind of forces it right down your throats, um, which is very interesting because it's, you know, there's two different perspectives one is it's a distraction one is it's not a distraction uh, i personally always believed it's not a distraction but if mike mayock saying uh, it is then i guess it is you know um, i guess some of the reasons why i think it's not a distraction is because a lot of it's set up you know and i understand that uh, for a coach to have a camera in a meeting and you're trying to give a meeting and then now players are all tensed up and acting different than how they would typically act you can't really coach your players when they're acting different, right? They're kind of distracted because there is a camera in the room. But another thing is, and why I didn't think it was a distraction is these things are set up. You know, it's not like John Gruden doesn't know where the camera is, right? You know where the camera is. They have to put lights in, right? Like, think about it. It's a movie. It's like a, it's a TV production set, right? They're going to put these big ass lights in. Uh, they're going to put like three, four cameras with different angles. They're going to have a, um, like a director or someone that shoots and they're going to have their, uh, their production boxes set up to capture all that film. There's so much that goes into it. So it's not like, you know, it's not like you don't know that there's a camera on you right now. All right. So that's why I always felt like it's not really a distraction because you know that the camera is there, uh, versus, you know, of course, Mike Mayock says that it is a distraction, which I guess it could be in the in the essence that uh, as a player, you're, you know, you want to come in to learn. 
you don't want a player that's coming in because, hey, we're on hard knocks, we're going to be on TV, right? Uh, it's just something you have to think about. Now, Mayock did mention that he knows a lot of those people that are shooting the show for hard knocks. Um, the the director, the guy that produces uh, this, or, or I shouldn't say per, the director, because director, producer, two different things. The producer, um, I don't know what his real name is, but it's Ray Donovan from the show, Ray Donovan. So if you guys haven't seen that show, that's the guy that produces Hard Knocks. And he's done it every year except for one year, which is interesting because uh, I really like the show Ray Donovan. <laughs> I don't know what his real name is, but um, he's he's a good actor. Uh, and apparently he does Hard Knocks, so he knows how to put these shows together. Um, Mike Mayock said that he knows all those people that are on that production set. Um but again, you know, he emphasized that they didn't invite Hard Knocks in. Uh, we didn't want it. And it is what it is, you know. Can't do much about that. If you guys did not watch this uh, interview that, that Gruden and Mayock did today, you guys should go check it out. It's on the official Raiders YouTube page. It's interesting, right? You guys should want to know what's going on. Uh, they, they hit on a lot of different points. Now, I think there's definitely better questions that could be uh, asked. Right. I mean, a lot of things that were asked, but I didn't really mention Gruden talked about car and, and how much he loves car. But, you know, who knows? Right. Who knows how much he really loves car? I love car. I think car's a great quarterback. We don't really know. Right. Gruden's going to say what he wants to say in front of the uh, cameras. Right. It is what it is. Um, but the truth is, is uh, quarterbacks is the hardest position to find. Right. That, that's why there's always uh, three, four quarterbacks selected in the first round every year. There's only 32 teams. Right. If, if four quarterbacks are being selected, that means in nine years, uh, there's at least, you know, every team should have already selected a new quarterback. That's why quarterback is such a hard position. That's why Derek Carr is in in the position that he's in. He hasn't performed well the last uh, two seasons. He really hasn't as far as um, not even just statistically, because statistically he hasn't. But as far as wins and losses, you know, when it really counts on fourth and three when we really need him to step up he hasn't been able to do it now he's definitely did do it uh, there are definitely games in which he did right like that cleveland browns game uh we needed that uh, that drive he drove us down scored and he got that two-point conversion uh, the pittsburgh steelers game he took us downfield threw that touchdown uh, won us the game so he's definitely done it but he hasn't been consistent right if it's like the first quarter for example and it's third and four we need to keep the keep the offense rolling and he's not able to get plays like though so it's not necessarily um, clutch plays like at the end of the game because he's definitely clutch it's more of um you know on the first quarter in the second quarter if it's third down uh, if it's second and 10 you know get at least four or five yards he hasn't been able to do things like that i know he put up four thousand yards and you know and he had 16 touchdowns, 10 or 11 interceptions, which is not great. You know, he needs to throw 30 plus touchdowns with 4,000 yards and he needs to keep his interceptions less than 15. You know, he has to have a two to one touchdown interception ratio minimum. Like that's bare minimum. Honestly, it should be closer to the three to one ratio. Um, but, you know, that's beside the point. I love Derek Carr. I have a lot of faith in him. Um, there's so many things that are going to happen over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. Of course, today's Friday. Uh, we'll hear some news at the end of camp. Uh, but next week's going to be a very interesting week. I want to let you guys know, as far as this podcast, I will try to do three episodes a week um, with the minimum of, of two episodes per week. Now, I want to try to hit, uh, I'll probably have episode four on Monday or, or, or maybe Tuesday morning, probably Tuesday morning because I'll let the weekend roll through and then we'll have a Monday practice. So, Tuesday morning will be the next time that I probably publish the Raiders pod. I will continue making film breakdowns. In fact, I have a Darren Waller breakdown coming tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, it's been made for a couple of days. Uh, the, I, th I felt the Keith Smith um, news was bigger. Uh, to me, you know, I, I love the dirty positions like fullbacks, nose tackles, stuff like that. So, of course, I'm going to talk about Keith Smith. Uh, I felt like that news was more important than putting that Darren Waller video out, even though it's been ready for about two days now. Uh, that'll publish tomorrow, uh, probably tomorrow evening or maybe even on, on Sunday. We'll see. Uh, it'll publish in the next couple of days. Um, I want to let you guys know, go follow me on Twitter. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, go follow me on Twitter. Uh, go follow me on Facebook. I'm going to start posting all my videos to Facebook as well, um, to Instagram. If you guys are not on Instagram, follow me on Instagram as well. 
Um, follow me on all the social social media networks. I really do appreciate you guys' support. It means a lot. You know, I would not do these videos if I didn't get the positive support I do from you guys. I really wouldn't. I really appreciate you. And I will see you guys next time with episode four of the Raiders pod.